Okay team, we're back with another dynamics video. Power, along with equation of motion, it's energy balance. It's just the same thing as we had in the last chapter, but with one more kink thrown in it, we've got a little bit of power thrown in here. We've got a couple of new equations. We've got power equals force times velocity, okay? The force applied to the body and then the velocity of that body gives us the power that it needs uh, that needs to uh, to do that work. And then we have efficiency. So this is typically going to be on some kind of motor problem, and they'll give you some kind of efficiency, which is power output divided by power input. Power input is always big, right? It's always bigger than power output. We lose some efficiency in that system. And so efficiency is always going to be less than 1, right? So let's look at this problem. And we remember from the last chapter, one of the, the, the central equation, which is, the sum of the T1, right? The sum of the energy, the energy balance, uh, plus U, 1 to 2, right? That work done on that body to go from position 1 to position 2 is equal to the sum of the T2s, right? That energy after uh, the work has been done. And so it's good to set up this energy balance, right? So you're looking at potential energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, and then the only thing we have to do is we have to calculate what is the work. And then once we have that, we're ready to go. Now you can tell my good friend Natalie has been here because her drawings are way more beautiful than mine. So if you ever see drawings on the channel that are really good, think Natalie. Okay, so we're looking for the power supplied to raise that elevator, okay? So the elevator weighs a thousand pounds and it's hoisted upward by a motor that exerts a constant uh, force of 500 pounds. So we know the, the force in this cable is 500 pounds. It's given, okay? Uh, they tell us that it's going to lift 15 feet. Maybe it goes up one floor, okay? So S, we're going to call this, we'll call this zero. This is where we start. This is our datum, if you will. And then we're going to go up 15 feet. So when we go up to our final position here, we'll be up 15 feet, okay? And then the motor has an efficiency of 65%. So we know right off the bat that this is 0.65. That is given. Okay, what else do they give us down here? Uh, the motor starts at rest. Okay, so let's see if we can fill all this out. Now, the, the first thing that we need, we need, we need force, right? We need this guy, and we need that guy. Now, the velocity is going to come from right here. It's going to come from these V's over here, okay? So that's where the V is going to come from, but where is that force going to come from? What is the force on the elevator? So let's look at the elevator by itself. Now we're going all the way back to statics here. So draw good free body diagrams. Okay, so here's the elevator. It's a thousand pounds. Okay, so what's acting upwards on the elevator? How many ropes are acting upward on the elevator? Well, it turns out it's just one rope, isn't it? This is just one rope, isn't it? So if we're going to cut that rope free to see, you know, what's acting on here, we need to cut through like right through there, right? So what you have is one rope, and then here's a pulley, with that same rope two more times, right? So if this is T, that's T, and that's T, okay? Now that's just some good old statics pulley problems, right? If you don't see that, go back to the statics lesson and look up the Pulley Palooza video. There's one almost exactly like this on there, okay? So right, right now we know that the tension in that cable is 500 pounds. That's given. So what's the force that's going to be acting on the elevator? Well, the force on the elevator, the force, is going to be equal to 3 times 500 pounds, okay, from those three ropes. So the force, F, is equal to 1,500 pounds, okay? Now let's see if we can use our energy balance, these equations here, to see if we can come up with what is the velocity, Okay. Now I like making this my datum and I like this because to me this makes sense that potential energy would be positive. It would be increased as we increase in height. So if the elevator goes from here, I'm gaining that potential energy. But I also have to do work in that direction, right, which is going to be positive work, to raise the elevator 15 feet. So let's see if we can, we can fill this out. So what's the potential energy uh, at H1? Well, H1, the height is zero. So the potential energy where it's sitting, let's call it zero, okay? 
We'll assume it was sitting on the ground or something, right? There was, it may have had potential energy, but we're, since that's our datum, we'll call that zero. The kinetic energy, the elevator starts at rest, so how much kinetic is there at rest? Well, of course, that also is zero. So let's talk about after we raise it to height. Now we've raised it up 15 feet. Okay. So we take our mg, which is w, which is given as 1,000 pounds, isn't it? Okay. And we're going to raise that 1,000 pounds, what height? To height number two. 15 feet, right? Okay. And then in number, in the kinetic energy for point number two, the energy equation is wrong. What's wrong with that? Y'all help me out here. That's not right, is it? It has a one half in front of it, doesn't it? It's one half mv squared, not just mv squared. Boy, that was close. There's so many places to mess this up. Okay, so what's the mass? The mass of the elevator is 1,000 pounds divided by 32.2, right? It's mass, it's not weight, times v. 2 squared. Now we found F, didn't we, Ari? We found that guy. The V that we're looking for, that guy is right there, isn't he? So let's see if we can find him. Let's fill this equation out now. This is from last chapter, right? If you didn't see this, go back and review it on the video before. The sum of the works before, I mean the energy before, that's this, plus the work. And what's work? That's force times distance, right? So how much force is exerted on the elevator? times how far, and then the sum of the energy afterwards, which is all this over here added up. So let's write that equation here, okay? So the sum of the t's before is this plus that. Well, that's easy, isn't it? I can do it in my head. Zero plus zero, plus the work. All right, so the work is the force, which we found was 1,500 pounds, okay? Times the distance that it moves, which is 15 feet, okay? So that's the work that's done on it, and it's positive because that work is done in the direction of motion, right? The force was upwards, the elevator moved upwards, so that, that, that uh, work is positive. Is equal to, okay, now we have our sum of the energies afterwards, so this plus that, right? So 1,000 times 15, okay, plus 1 half, uh, 1,000 divided by 32.2 times the velocity squared. Okay, so let's see if we can solve for that guy, okay? So, oh, clear, clear. 15 times 1,500 is 22.5 is equal to, that's 15,000, okay? And then what's that over there? 1,000 divided by 32.2 uh, divided by 2, right? No, it's times a half. Oh, it's the same thing. So plus 15.53 and then V2 squared, okay? So let's move that to the other side. That's 7,500. Divide that by 15.53. Whoa, that's not how you write that. 5, 3, and that will give us V2 squared, okay? So 7,500 divided by 15.53 equals 482.9, and then what do we want, the square root of that? Square root of the answer, that gives me 21.98. So the velocity... 21.98 uh, feet per second, okay? So that's the speed, the velocity of the elevator when it gets to that 15 foot level, okay? So that's the number I need to put in right here, okay? So that's gonna give me what? Okay, the power is equal to F times V, so 1,500 pounds. And be real careful with your units here, right? times 21.98 feet per second. So that's gonna give me pound feet per second. You know what that, that is, right? Okay, so that's, uh, what is that? 1,500 times 
equals 32 970 foot pounds per second okay and then what that's what our power out is right our output this is p out the pout okay i need to get rid of that feet pound per second because i want it in horsepower so one horsepower is equal to 550 foot pounds per second now that and that will cancel out now that's going to give me uh, horsepower isn't so p out is equal to that divided by 550 uh, 59.94 really 60 uh, horsepower okay so there's my output and they ask me what's the power supplied which is Spanish for what's the power input okay and so we come over here we know our efficiency right if we're looking for power input let's move that to the other side power input is equal to power output which we just found 60 horsepower divided by 0.65 okay so 60 divided by 0.65 equals 92.3 And again, we knew that the power input is way more than the power output because there's losses in the system, right? That's what the whole efficiency thing is all about. So there you go. Another kind of example using our energy balance equations. So I hope that, uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope it helps. We'll see you next time.